Right, so just looking at the uh, the design, um, it's, it's not an uncommon one which you certainly see around the place. Um, it's two J310s and a cascode configuration, giving a, a pseudo dual gate MOSFET. Um, the signal's coming in through here, so 50 ohms is coming from the antenna, through an impedance matching transformer. Um, looking to bring that up to around uh, sort of 2,000 to 3,000 ohms. Um, I'm certainly not an expert and I don't have a huge amount of experience with these, but sort of reading through the literature, it was talking about the input impedance sort of being, or desiring, having a desired input impedance around that area. Um, I must admit I've seen all sorts of different values, uh, 10 megs, 1 meg, um, all sorts, uh, 10k, 2.2k, but for now I've sort of gone with the the, uh, the guidance material that came out of um, the reference material, which was, excuse me, experimental methods in RF design, uh, and that talked about that input impedance of sort of 2,000 or 3,000, and we'll look at that in a sec. Um, up here we can see the gain control, so we've got our 13.8 volts just coming through a small isolating uh, resistor here, on the output of that uh, some decoupling, and then I'm taking that voltage and putting it through this voltage divider network here, that's a 10k pot, so the voltage can go effectively from 0 through to um, 10k over 15 which we'll look at before over 25 times that voltage there to give us that sort of gain variation. There's a ferrite bead in there. Um, that ferrite bead, again, was a recommendation uh, in the, in the uh, design book. Um, one of the authors, in playing around with a similar circuit to this, uh, not the same as this one, but very similar, um, experienced some high frequency oscillations around sort of 800 megs, uh, and that was sort of fixed by the insertion of this ferrite bead. Um, I've got a whole stack of these things lying in the, uh, the junk box, so I just inserted one uh, just for good measure. And then the output impedance, uh, just sort of matching uh, our output impedance here down to 50 ohms, and we'll have a look at that in a sec. So I'm sort of looking at uh, the specs and coming up with some, some of the numbers, specifically uh, this video of RS here. Um, the J310, some uh, the spec sheet, um, we're going to set the drain current at 10 milliamps. We've got a pinch off voltage of minus 3 and an IDSS of uh, 45 milliamps. And by using this formula here, we can calculate the value of the self-biasing resistor uh, in the source. So minus VP over ID, 1 minus square root ID of IDSS. So inserting those values into that, we come up with this, and we come out with 159 ohms. And I'm going to use um, as a standard value 150 ohms for that value there. Uh, this degeneration here on the uh, across that one, um, I use LT Spice to come up with that um, to, to try and level the gain uh, across uh, from 3.5 megahertz or 80 meters all the way through to uh, 14 megahertz or 20 meters. Um, it was never ever going to be perfectly flat, um, but while it started off like this, I've sort of managed to um, have the peak more according to the simulation, and you'll see later on. That's not necessarily what played out in, rea in reality, and that's not unusual. Uh, it was more around 7 megs, but it certainly helped with that high frequency um, gain. So T1, um, just using a, a broadband transformer, so it's an FT37-43, and as we said, looking to transform that 50 ohms up to somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000. Uh, and taking those two values as extremes, so uh, by using 2,000 we have an N of 6.3 and using 3,000 we come up with a turns ratio of 7.7 .7. and uh, funny old thing, halfway between those is an N of 7 so uh, that's what we'll use uh, for that let's go the second page so we had a, a, uh, an N of 7 so we can use a turns ratio here of 5 turns to 35 turns, so um, 7 fives to 35. Um, and then just our rule of thumb here, at, at 5 turns at 3.5 MHz, which is our lowest frequency, we have an inductive reactance of 192 ohms, which is roughly 4 times our 50. Interesting enough, that same um, textbook, in one breath says... Um, 
for that practical transformers should be five times greater or the inductive reactance should be five times greater than the terminating resistance and then later on the book it talks about four to five times so um, five times fine but you do find then you do have some massive turns ratios to, to, to come up with that sort of criteria and when you're trying to squeeze this onto an FT37-43 it can come quite problematic 35 turns for example with, with size 26 wire was a squeeze so I'm, I'm going to just continue going with my try and get more than four but four to five would be nice so that's what I'm going to um, I'm going to do there uh, we talked about the uh, the voltage on that gate if we just flick back to here so in terms of this voltage divider network here providing the bias for that second um, JFET which then ultimately varies the overall current going through um, the cascode system we can range from 0 volts which is at the lowest point to uh, fully across the 10k pot so 10k divided by 10k plus 15k it's a sort of standard voltage divider biasing and then just taking into consideration that point 0.1 which is you know, here nor there really um, voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistor so we said 10 milliamps times 10 ohms gives us our point 0.1 so 13.8 minus that, multiplied by that voltage divider, gives us a range of 0 to 5.48 volts. And we'll see later on um, that that gives us, again, variation of roughly uh, between 14 and 16 dB, um, depending on uh, which frequency you're using. Um, and the other thing, too, from, a, uh, from looking sort of through the literature, quite often you see coming into the gate if you are providing a biasing voltage uh, a 10 k ohm resistor um, which uh, I suspect looking at it it would be a current limiting so if this was to, to have current flying through it that would limit that uh, in this particular case I've emitted that because I've got a 15 k here so um, either way if I was to have current flowing through here from here it would have to go through that resistor so um, I'm quite happy to use that as a pseudo um, gate resistance there. Uh, T2, that's that uh, second transformer on the, the drain. Excuse me for moving the paper backwards and forwards. So there's T2 here. And there we're transforming our 50 ohm load back down to a 1250 ohms for the drain. Again, in the literature, uh, that seemed to be quite a common value. Uh, looking at the various turns ratios for various radios, nothing definitive, so I've decided just to elect to use uh, 1250. So 1250 for a turns ratio of a 50 gives us 5, um, and I'm going to use um, 6 turns to 30 turns, 6 fives to 30. So 6 turns at our lowest frequency is 277 ohms, um, which meets our uh, greater than a minimum of 4 times 50. I'm getting quite close to, well, in fact, it's 5 fives to 25, so we're good right over the 5 there. So, anyway, so I'm going to break there. Um, we'll have a, a quick look at the actual uh, amplifier itself, which is sitting over there, and then we'll look at um, testing the actual uh, amplifier with the SIG gen and looking at some of the voltage gains. Okay, so just quickly look at the amplifier in the circuit. Uh, you can see here the RF coming in. This is our bypass switch. So uh, we can either have it going directly down the bottom to this little link, directly out, so it's bypassed, or we can turn it on and we can have that RF going through the amplifier and then back out that way. Uh, you can see our pot there uh, with the 15k ohm resistor uh, and our 10k ohm um, pot there with earth on the other side. Uh, there goes our two J310s, and you can see the little ferrite bead there, and our two impedance matching transformers, T1 for the input, uh, and T2 for the output. Uh, and then that uh, resistor-capacitor combination across our source resistor for the first JFET. Right, so let's just break there. We'll um, hook up the SIGGEN and the OSCOPE, and uh, we will have a look at some of the gains at both 35 and 14 megahertz.
Okay, so we've got the amplifier in the circuit um, and we've done a bit of a reconfiguration on the radio. So at the moment the radio is set up as a direct conversion receiver. So we've got the RF coming in over the left hand side. It's going into our RF amplifier. We have a bypass switch, so amplifier off, amplifier on, and we have our gain control. And the output of that is then going through directly through this relay through the normally closed contacts. This is unpowered at this stage and straight into this mixer here. Um, that's been mixed with a VFO frequency at the same frequency of the incoming RF and the output is audio which is then going into our audio amplifier that we built the other day. Um, I've got a, a mega down here, just a spare one I had lying around in the junk box, and that's basically driving the SI5351 DDS, as well as the screen, uh, and having the rotary encoder as an input, as well as this old mechanical switch, which I've had in the junk box for literally, gosh, must be going on 30 years now, from some old piece of military equipment, um, which, I'm now, which I'm using for the user interface, so that's basically for inputting. Uh, and you see over here that if it's if it's on it's yellow, if it's if it's not on or not selected it's greyed out so we can go backwards and forwards between those two. Uh, the software at the moment is just test software. So once we convert this to a uh, a single conversion radio, we will have the crystal filter in the circuit. So the RF will then come into the first mixer. It'll be mixed down to the IF, there'll be an IF amplifier in here, through the crystal filter, through the second IF amp into the product detector, mixed with the BFO from this side of the DDS, and then the audio will come out. But at the moment this is just configured as a direct conversion receiver. Um, and like I say, when we do transition to uh, the single conversion, then we'll need to tailor our VFO and our BFO frequencies to suit the characteristics of that ladder crystal, or that, uh, that filter there. So that's why I've got this test software once that's up and running and we've identified exactly what the frequencies need to be, then I'll go back to my normal software and just insert those values behind the scenes in the code. But anyway, today was more about looking at the, um, looking at that um, RF amplifier or the antenna amplifier. We've got uh, the SIGGEN coming in on this red wire here through a 50 ohm resistor, and then just in the screen there we've got. Um, the output of this black wire here is then just being dumped across a 51 ohm resistor with the scope probe hanging off that. And as you can see there, as we adjust the gain, you can see in the scope, we've got some variations there. So at the moment that is sitting on 14.1 megahertz. And if I measure the maximum gain over what I'm putting in, I get a gain of 20 dB. And then if I go down to the minimum level, you can see there it's just above um, what's coming in, and that's 3 dB, which gives an overall gain variation at 14 megahertz of 16.57 dB, so between 3 and 20 dB. As expected, and as shown on the um, uh, LT Spice, uh, I, I tried to make that, and that amplifier as broadband as I could, by throwing in some emitter degeneration. Um, it certainly improved it, but I think I was, you know, it was never going to be flat all the way from three and a half megs through to 14 megs. So in terms of gain, there is there is a slight drop, but so be it. Um, I'm quite able to live with that for now. If we now drop the frequency down to 13.7, you can see that we certainly get a little bit more gain there, so that's 13.7. Um, that's what's coming in, so not a lot. So that's there is minimum gain, and then if we were to crank it up to maximum gain, we're up there, so that's our gain variation. Uh, at 3.7 megahertz, for the same amplitude coming in, I'm getting uh, a maximum gain of 30 dB and a minimum gain, i.e. at the lowest position, um, of 16 dB, which gives an overall gain variation of 14.35 dB, so quite similar to um, the higher end. Uh, 7 megahertz, funny old thing, is, is in between, so uh, not that I'm going to 
put in this radio uh, 7 megahertz or 40 meter um, filters but there's certainly nothing stopping me from doing that if I wanted to so um, at this stage I'm not going to work on that RF amp anymore um, in terms of trying to even that gain across um, from 80 meters all the way through to 20 uh, like I say the the addition of that emitter, well it's not actually an emitter because it's um, a JFET, so that um, source degeneration certainly helped. Um, but you know, like I say, I'm going to I'm going to live with that for now. So next steps will be to uh, turn this into a, a single conversion superhead. So we'll look at designing up the IF amplifiers, one here and one here. Um, we will utilise this relay again which allows us to basically steer uh, RF through clockwise through the circuit if it's on receive it will come from here straight up around and down if it's on transmit we build the microphone amplifier eventually it will come in through here cut across up around cut back across to here and then transformed up through this mixer up to our desired RF so um, we will use that again and like I say, uh, when we do that video and we convert it, then we'll use this test software here to, to basically um, uh, to set our, uh, our frequencies that we need. So that's all for now. Um, I don't think there's anything else to pass on. Um, no, so that's good. So I'll, I'll leave it there and uh, we will catch you on the next video. Thanks. Yeah, so I thought I'd do a very quick uh, video at the end of um, of uh, just going through the RF amp, just showing the pre-conversion setup. That's the RF amp changing here. A lot of the literature says that you don't really need an RF amplifier below uh, on the low frequency, so certainly not 80 meters. Yeah. You can just see down here, I'm just using what will be notionally the, the BFO side, which is the right hand side there, because I'm only using that one mixer. As a um, as a detector at the moment, well, a product detector coming down to direct audio. Um, that's why I'm just using that bottom one. Anyway, enough enough said. Uh, cheers, everybody, and uh, we'll start to work on the IF amps. 73s.